Hey guys, Blackpool Joe here. Today we're going to discuss the brand new animated film, The Grinch, from Illumination Studios, who's done the Despicable Me films, the Secret Life of Pet films, the Minion films. Um, Universal is also one of the producers. Universal owns Illumination. Um, I had such high hopes for this movie because I'm a massive fan of The Grinch. Massive fan. I love his story. I love the... the villain turned hero concept i love the realizing what christmas means and that kind of a thing i love the wonder that the story brings i love the wonder that the original cartoon brings i love the wonder that the 2000 ron howard directed jim carrey film brings this movie was bad it was bad and I, it kills me to say how bad it was when they announced that Benedict Cumberbatch was going to be the voice of the Grinch I was like yeah that's awesome when they showed the animation of the Grinch and Max I was like yeah that's great and then they showed the trailer and I was like that doesn't look like Whoville but I'm, I'm excited and then they announced that you know Tyler the Creator was doing the was like head spear in the, the, the soundtrack for making the You're a Mean One Mr. Grinch song and I was like, okay, I'm curious. And then they announced Pharrell Williams was going to be the narrator. And I was like, okay, I'm interested. And then they announced that Pentatonix had a so song on the soundtrack. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great then because Pentatonix is awesome. So this movie's m movie was all over the place. The, 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 there was no wonder. There was no sense of wonder in this story. And they used maybe an eighth of the rhymes of the book, whereas the TV show and the 2000 version and even the Broadway show had at least a half, if not more, of the rhymes from the story to, you know, incorporate. Like, with the first moment in this movie that the Grinch meets Cindy Lou Who, the, the whole, you know, he got a cup of water and pat her head and sent her to bed. Not even in, no, no. Nothing, nothing of that. The very end of the movie, when Cindy's mom puts the rare roast beast in front of him to carve, because it goes the Grinch, he himself carved the rare roast beast. No, the rhyme wasn't even there. How do you have a narrator telling a story if the story's not even in the damn story? I don't, I don't get it. It was super weird, super weird. The, the who's were these bearded, fluffy people like, okay, but Whoville didn't have that Arabian sense of wonder, you know? Any, any, any Dr. Seuss book, you always see those, you know, arabesque arches and stuff like that. That's just how he, Dr. Seuss wrote. That's how he drew. That's how he illustrated. And then when the 2000 movie came out, another Universal property um, with Jim Carrey, Ron Howard made sure to go to the detail of how to represent a Dr. Seuss book on the screen and it it was magical it was wonderful it had that sense of wonder and magic and I just said magic and wonderful at least four times in this duration of this brief segment but that movie made sense Jim Carrey as a Grinch made sense you know it had wonder to it it, it had the rhymes of the story in it and then this movie didn't have that it didn't have the wonder it, it, it was boring it was boring. I heard so many people snoring around me. It was weird. The only savior of the movie was Max, because Max is the dog, and the Ma Max the dog is always a great character. But let's let's talk about the soundtrack now. Tyler, the creator, having a hip-hop Grinch song mixed in with choral music did not make sense. Rap and, and, and choir music don't normally go together. There are exceptions. Sister Act is a perfect example, specifically Sister Act 2. There's a, a Joyful Joyful, right? It's a go-to choir song for most choirs around, and they had a rap in it to bring the old song into the modern times back in, what, the 80s, 90s, whenever that movie was. I get it, and it makes sense. I was in a choir back in the day. I sang that song all the time. We had a little rappy part, and it made sense. It was fun. It 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 was a coherent story in the song. But to have separated 
rap song, separated choir song, separated rap song, separated choral song. I'm super confused. I, I didn't understand why this was happening and it was annoying because there was no theme. It was just like, let's just throw whatever the hell we want into the soundtrack and see if it sticks. And it's unfortunate because Tyler, the creator, is a very amazing, he's, he's a very talented artist. Pharrell Williams, very talented artist. Should have never been the narrator, ever. Not even a shot in hell. Anthony Hopkins was the narrator for the 2000 Ron Howard movie. Made perfect sense. Gives it that sense of wonder if you're telling a story, right? But Pharrell, it just didn't seem like, it seemed like he had to do so many takes to actually get the story down and the editing process was just like, oh, this one sounds good enough. Not perfect, but good enough. And I don't like that. They they shouldn't have had Pharrell um, do the voicing for the narration. He's a great, talented human, but he should not have been the narrator for this movie. And then I feel horrible for... I mean, I don't feel hard. No, I feel horrible for Pentatonix because they have an amazing, amazing song that they put into this movie that they had different, you know, Whoville, Whovians... Whovalians? I don't know how to say. Whovians. Yeah, Whovians. Different Whovians were singing this song in an acapella choral aspect, chasing the Grinch around Whoville. It was funny. It made sense. And then that was it. And then there was a rap song, and then there was something else, and then there was another choral song, which had nothing to do with pentatonix. And the wonder wasn't in the story. Why make this movie if you're not going to put the narration of the story in it? Why are you going to change the narration of the story? It's not, that's not what this, it's not, I have the book. I keep looking this way. Oh no, wait, this is Horton. Un momento, por favor. There we go. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, right? Let's go to the, let's go to the things. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. The last final page the last final rhyme. I get it. This movie's an adaptation, but no, it's a bad adaptation. Broadway show, great. 2000 movie, great. 1960s cartoon, great. When did this even come out? I don't even remember. Ugh. 1957. 1957. That's when this came out, right? So great. So like you see, it's it's all this. Uh, where's an example? What, what was I trying to say before? So like the Grinch is you know going through, and I'm not reading, but there's like the archway, and like there's no like actual straight lines. Everything is curved and stuff like that. That's Whoville. Whoville doesn't have straight lines, but this Whoville did. This is weird. Didn't make sense. Some things are hit and misses. Some things are hits. Other things are misses. This, unfortunately, is a miss. People are going to say 10 years from now, 18 years from now, oh, remember they tried to do that? But people talk about the Grinch from 2000, 18 years from now, and go, oh, I am the Grinch. I, I The Grinch never hated Christmas. He just hated people. And I can relate to that. That's where the memes are right now. So I fear 18 years from now what the memes are going to be in, what, 2036? Frightening thought, but again, 18 years ago was 2000. So. so I love it. Did you see the movie? Are you as mad about this becoming that as I am? Because I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm, I'm, no, mad's at, I'm, mad's at what? I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. So that's the thing for it. What'd you guys think? I know I'm not alone in this. Please join the conversation down below. I'm sure I'm hollow, guys.